Can you possibly guess how we create this particular optical illusion all within Blender? It's actually really simple, although it looks impossible. So let's find the tips and tricks to create this. In our default scene, we'll go ahead and tap X to delete the default cube. Then we'll press Shift A and search for a mesh circle. And then just press this drop down over here and change the vertices from 32 to something much higher. So let's go with 128. After that, we can collapse it again and tap R X 90 to rotate the circle about the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we can press S5 to scale it up by five units and then press tab to go into edit mode. Now we can press one to go into the front view and just zoom in and then just select these few vertices on top. The number doesn't quite matter, but you have to make sure that it's symmetric about the Z axis. And once you've done that, you have to invert the selection by pressing control I and then tapping X delete vertices. Then you can tap A to select everything and then press E Z to just extrude it on the Z axis by one unit is fine. And then you can tap A and three to go into face select mode or press this button up here. And then you can press E Y one so that it gets extruded on the Y axis by one unit. Now, if you go to seven, which is the top view, you can see that the origin is present on the side of this newly created object. So to fix that, you can either move the object on the Y axis by minus 0 0.5 units and then go to object set origin to 3D cursor or alternatively you could go into edit mode tab A to select everything and then press GY minus 0.5 to bring it to the center and the origin remains right there. Whichever way you choose once you're happy with it you can go ahead and duplicate this to create an entire ring. To do that there are many methods but the way I'm going to do it is by changing the pivot point to the 3D cursor which is at the origin and then pressing tab to go into edit mode A to select everything and then pressing shift D R Y 90 and then pressing shift R to just repeat that twice and then tapping A to select everything again, shift D R Y 45 and that should be good enough. Now that we have this particular ring, we can expand the timeline and set all of our defaults. So let's go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and end frame to 150. Or if you want it to be nice and smooth, you can make it a 60 frame per second animation and that way you'll have to change the end frame accordingly so that it remains a five second long animation. Then I'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero and then I'll tap I rotation and then I'll go to frame 300 and then press R Y 360 so that it rotates about the Y axis by one full rotation and then I'll have to tap I rotation then down here I'll press T linear and that way we should get a smooth loop of this rotating about the Y axis one whole time and then looping again now we need to duplicate this so we press shift D R Z 90 so that we get another copy which is rotated by 90 degrees but if you were to play the animation it's going to snap back to the original so make sure that you don't do that by accident. Instead, before you play the animation or change to any other frame, expand this little side panel over here and then expand the summary, open up the object transforms, choose the Z rotation, just select it and tap X to delete the keyframes. And now you should have another version of it rotating in the same way, but about the X axis instead. Once you have this, that's actually all there is for the animation. You can now select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, and then press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. And then R Z 45 to rotate it about the Z axis by 45 degrees. Then you can go to the camera properties and change the type from perspective to orthographic. And then if you just play around with the orthographic scale, you should be able to zoom in and zoom out till you get everything to fit into your scene. And once you have that, you'll realize that some areas are getting cut off because you have this clip start and clip end and you're actually present right in between this object. So you can press G Z twice to move back on the local Z axis and that's equivalent to just zooming out and just zoom out till you see no more clipping. So once I'm about here, there's no longer any clipping. So this is far enough. Now that we have the camera present behind the entire object and the orthographic scale set such that everything is fitting within the scene, we can go ahead and make a few changes such that this overlap that we see occurring right on top over here and at the bottom over here is removed. So to prevent this overlap, what we do is we actually hide the bottom half of one of these rings and we hide the top half of the other half. And that's fairly easy to do. We can press shift A and search for a mesh cube and then press G Z minus one and then set this as the origin. So object set origin to 3D cursor. So that way we can just scale it up without having it go up or down. Now we can just bring it up until the entire circle is covered. Now the cube is getting cut off again. So let's take this camera and just move it back on the Z axis even further. And now we can see everything properly. Then we'll select this first circle, go to the modifier properties and add in a Boolean modifier. We'll keep it on difference and we'll just select the cube. Then we'll choose the second circle, add in the same Boolean modifier, but this time instead of difference, we'll choose intersect and then select 
the cube again. So that way for this second circle, only the bottom half is seen because that's where it's intersecting with the cube. And for the first circle, only the top half is seen because that is essentially the circle minus the cube. And also to make things faster, you can change the solver to fast on both of these modifiers and that'll just make it render a bit faster. Apart from that, we don't want the cube to be seen. So we'll go to the object properties. We'll change the visibility off on renders. And for the viewport display, we can change display as wire. And that way it won't disturb us and we'll be able to see what we have. Now that looks perfectly all right. And we're practically done with it. If we switch over to our rendered view, we should see what we're going to get when we render it. And right now you can see that there's this huge shading issue happening over here. And that's because of the light. So the first thing that we can do to fix that is go to the light properties by selecting it and coming down here and then changing this to a sun. And that way we get even shading everywhere. And that just prevents any of those edges from coming. But we have to change the strength down to something like one or two to not blow it completely out of proportions. Beyond that, I don't actually like the way the shadows are falling here. And that also breaks the illusion. So we can go ahead and switch off shadows. And that's all you have to do. We can always right click and click shade auto smooth to just remove these harsh lines. So do that for both the objects and you should have a perfectly smooth loop. For the texturing part of this, I didn't do much. I just added in a new material for both of them, made them mostly metallic and kept everything else at the default itself, selected the other object, gave it the same material. And then for the world background, I went ahead and made it completely bright, gave it a tint of a color. And then for my render properties, I went down to the color management and just played around with the exposure and the gamma. So I'm gonna change the gamma to 0.2 and the exposure as well to something like 2.5. And then I just wanna change the brightness and contrast. So I'll expand this button up here and choose the compositor to camera so that we can see what the composited image looks like. And then we can change this from the timeline to the compositor window, and then just check this use nodes button. Then we can move this composite to the side, press shift A and search for a brightness and contrast node. Plug that in just before the composite, increase the brightness to five, increase the contrast to something like 20, and just feel free to play around with those settings as much as you want until you get something that you like. You can always keep the strength of the sun a little higher as well and play around with the angle until you get a situation where all of these different edges are nicely highlighted. You can also round out the edges a bit by adding in some bevel modifiers, but make sure that this bevel modifier is added in before the Boolean modifier. And that will just make sure that everything is seamless during the transition as well. So add in the same bevel modifier for this one, bring it up, make sure that the settings are the same. So that's an amount of 0.011 and seg changed up to something like four. So with that, you get these nice soft edges and all the shadows can be seen, which makes this impossible looking render or optical illusion possible to be created all within Blender. If you watched that far into the video, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. And I'm also very glad that the video was useful enough for you to watch till the end. I post videos every single day. So there's so many videos that are present on my channel, which I'm sure can give you some sort of inspiration or motivation to create your own animations as well. So it would be very helpful if you watch those as well. Until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching once again. Keep creating and stay creative.